Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're going to talk about the comic book industry, and we're going to talk about manga. We're going to talk about how manga is killing it right now. Manga is making up a larger and larger share of the uh, comic book industry, at least in the, uh, the mainstream, in publishing channels. And we've been talking about this before. If you check Clownfish TV, you'll see that we have videos going back probably six months or more calling it that manga was going to um, sort of supplant superhero comics, at least in the graphic novel marketplace. And it's it's happening. It's happening. It's been confirmed. There was a tweet put out the other day by Heidi McDonald from New York Comic Con um, saying that this slide shocked comics pro uh, showing the size of manga and kids genres in comics. And it, it really shouldn't. If anyone's actually been paying attention uh, if anyone's actually been paying attention, manga is absolutely, absolutely on the rise again. A lot of people wondered whether or not manga would ever make a comeback. Is it sort of imploded in the late 2000s with uh, Tokyo Pop? Uh, not, not going under, but uh, you know, regrouping with borders going out of business. And you know, if this is any indication, um, manga is on the rise and it's supplanting superheroes. You know, there's there's a shift in the American comic book buying audience in their tastes and monthly floppy superhero comics clearly aren't doing it anymore for people. Uh, people are looking for other kinds of, uh, other kinds of comics, but there is definitely a market for comic books. We're seeing it with manga, with uh, graphic novels. We're seeing it with crowdfunding campaigns, you know, uh, crowdfunding campaigns that offer different kinds of comics than what you would find in the direct market. And there definitely is a shift going on here. And again, anyone who's been watching uh, Clownfish TV for the last uh, six or eight months would know that we've been kind of calling this and we've been uh, uh, looking at this situation. Now we've got Forbes, Forbes chiming in and saying that, yeah, manga is leaving superheroes behind. New data shows that comic readers are leaving superheroes behind, um, you know, which is kind of kind of sad because that is an era of comics, but people forget, you know, when comic books first started, we didn't have superheroes. So before we get into the video, just a reminder to please subscribe to Clownfish TV. Uh, we hit 65,000 subs. We're hoping for 100,000 soon. Now, uh, it's it's kind of important to subscribe to YouTube channels that, that give you independent news, uh, independent views on things, because the way the algorithm has been working lately, uh, YouTube seems to be favoring established corporate news outlets uh, over independent channels like ours uh, so if you like clownfish tv you want to keep us on the air um you know please please give us a sub and that same is true for any other channel that you like on youtube uh the easiest thing you can do to help keep them online is to give them a sub so here we go coming from forbes uh, rob salkowitz i think I've, I've covered articles by him before surprising new data it's not surprising, Rob. It's not surprising to anyone who's been paying attention. Data shows comic readers are leaving superheroes behind. A day after New York Comic Con put an exclamation mark on the media dominance the superheroes exert over today's entertainment and popular culture, <sighs> data was shared in a private industry conference indicating that a massive shift in the comics publishing industry has reached a tipping point. For the first time that anyone can remember, superheroes are being outsold in their native medium, American comic books and graphic novels, by other kinds of content, notably kid-oriented fare and Japanese manga. The sales trend behind this shift were laid out by longtime industry analyst uh, Milton Greep at a conference organized by his company, ICV2, um, held at Pace University in downtown New York. ICV2, in conjunction with metric site Comicron, gathers market data on the North American comics industry, tracking sales of periodicals, trade books, i.e. graphic novels, and download to own digital comics. Sizing the market for comics has become a complicated process. Yeah, it has. Uh, it's very um, sad. Mainstream comics uh, right now is, is kind of sad, at least the direct market. After comic books vanished from the newsstand in the 80s, nearly all periodical comics were sold through a network of independently owned retail comic shops, the comics are distributed through a single firm, Diamond, in an arrangement known as the direct market. Because this inventory is non-returnable, the number of copies ordered and shipped to comic stores are counted as sales, even if they do not sell through to customers at retail. That is very important, and people don't understand this. Uh, just because you see 100,000 of whatever Marvel or DC book shipping, that does not mean 
that those books were actually sold to customers. It means that Diamond sold that many copies to retailers. Uh, and in many cases, the retailers are stuck with stock that they can't sell. This happens often with Marvel books. It's actually one of the biggest complaints that a lot of retailers have is that the books are non-returnable and they get stuck with a bunch of stuff. You know, they're less likely to take chances because they can't return the books if they can't sell them. And, you know, with the market shrinking, you know, the margins aren't there. Retailers don't have thousands of dollars to throw at unproven books you know, in the hopes that they maybe possibly might might sell them. Graphic novels were sold in the direct market and also to trade bookstores with consumer sales tracked through the book industry standard system BookScan, uh, now owned and managed by media metrics firm MPD. Together, about 90% of comics and graphic novels in North America are sold through bookstores or comic stores, with 9% going through digital services like Amazon's Kindle or the Amazon-owned uh, Comixology, about 1% sold on newsstands or through Kickstarter. And Indiegogo. Why do they never mention Indiegogo? Because uh, Indiegogo's actually got some of the biggest campaigns. I mean, we had Doug Tenaple on the show. He did over $800,000 on Earthworm Jim. Uh, other big campaigns, uh, you know, by, by guys like uh, Ethan Van Skyver you know, have, have skyrocketed, uh, you know, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars and they dismiss Indiegogo. Uh, that's a huge mistake, I think, because actually Indiegogo, in my opinion, uh, has been bringing the boom where Kickstarter really has a lot of campaigns on Kickstarter aren't doing nearly as well as they used to. Uh, ICV2 has estimated the total value of the market at uh, a little over a billion dollars in 2018, up modestly from the, uh, 2017 total. Yeah. Again, it's only up though because now they're counting crowdfunding and this was another video and this is something that a lot of uh, other youtubers have discussed that it's only up in 2018 because they had to roll crowdfunding into the number so typically increases in the overall market are driven by the comic industry's two largest companies marvel and dc again they've got uh, corporate overlords uh, disney owns marvel and warner owns dc which both uh, publish corporate-owned superhero comics almost exclusively and together account for about 80% of all comics sold through the direct market. For the last several years, the Trade Book Channel has become an increasingly significant driver of revenue, gaining double-digit year-over-year increases as comic store sales have declined. Um, ICV2 estimates that bookstore sales accounted for $465 million in 2018, compared to $510 million in the direct market. When you add in the digital and other channels, direct market sales fell under 50% of the total for the first time since comic shops overtook newsstand distribution in the early 1980s. Um, so yeah, there's, look, we're going to talk about this. There is a lot of doom and gloom in the comic book industry, the monthly comic book industry, the direct market. It's it's pretty dire, um, but there, there are other avenues. Uh, there are other avenues. Uh, obviously, you know, manga is doing very, very well. Uh, some kids' graphic novels are doing well, and we'll talk about that. I don't, I don't think this is the the slam dunk. This is not the solution for every creator because very few people are actually making big, big bucks doing kids' graphic novels. Now, there are some people doing very, very well. You've got your Michael Jordans, you know, who are doing very, very well. But uh, you know, everybody else, eh, you know, it's it's debatable. It's debatable. So comic shops tend to focus on longtime fans, older readers who grew up and collect superhero comics, mass market bookstores sell to everyone, including younger readers and those outside of traditional comics fandom. Consequently, the books they are selling in bookstores are generally not superhero oriented, and most manga isn't. Most manga isn't. Most young adult comics uh, are not. According to BookScan data shared at the conference, kid-oriented comics and graphic novels account for a whopping 41% of sell-through at bookstores. Manga is 28%. Superhero content is less than less than 10%. Less than 10%. Okay, so this is the breakdown right here. Um, and in fact, I thought it was the increase, but we're talking like these are on the decline. Uh, manga is the second largest category of comics and graphic novels and book scan after kids fiction. So that trend away from capes and cows is also starting to be reflected even within the more insular comic store market with the arrival of more diverse audiences with different tastes. ICV2 notes a massive shift in the past two years with kid-oriented titles for re readers age 6 to 18 up 20% in comic store sales and 39% bookstores. I'm, I'm going to... 
I don't know. I'd have to look into this. Um, I don't see a lot of kid-focused comics doing that well in the direct market. I could be wrong. It could be the graphic novels, but single-issue kids' comics do not seem to do well. Unless they're rolling in things like Star Wars from IDW, maybe that's what they're talking about, My Little Pony, which I, I think, even though it might be a kid-oriented title, has a pretty sizable adult audience. Um, they could be rolling in all these licensed books, you know, Transformers and My Little Pony and and all of that and saying that they're kids comics. But I, I mean, just my own, I guess I'm going to say my own gut feeling here is I don't think single issue kids comics do terribly well. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but um, uh, I'll, I'll have to look into it. The full year 2019 data is not available. It's clear that the popularity of younger reader material has accelerated with the unprecedented success of Dogman. Yeah, Dogman selling very well. And uh, Raina Telgemeier's books, Guts rocketing to the top of the overall bestseller list in the first week of release. That's actually pretty important. Uh, okay, so going back out to the beat, Raina Telgemeier's Guts is number one, or was number one, uh, whichever week this was. This was the end of September. Before that was Dogman. Yo, I want to be clear though, Those both of those books are from graphics. Both of those books are widely available at places like Walmart. Both of those books are pushed very, very hard uh, by Scholastic. Scholastic has very, very few people doing graphic novels for them. And this is kind of important, I think, because of the success of Raina Telgemeier and, and uh, uh, Dogman. I think that they'll probably take more chances. But I've also heard, and I, I, I know from several people who've done books for Scholastic, who have gotten recent offers from Scholastic, the advances aren't very high. Uh, there's really only one Raina Telgemeier, you know, and it is kind of a fluke. It's like, I mean, it's not impossible, but saying like, I'm going to go play basketball and I'm going to be, I'm going to be Michael Jordan. You know, uh, there's one Michael Jordan. There are other people who are close, but you know, I'm just talking in terms of, you know, uh, earnings potential. Um, and it does seem like scholastic, at least from my vantage point, having, been that uh, Geeky and I both pursued uh, the graphic novel route for years, uh, pitched some books, had an agent, the whole thing. It does seem like it's a very, very slim chance, uh, right place, right time to get in. And Scholastic already kind of has its its hit makers locked down. Like they, they're they going to make sure Raina Telgemeier does well. They're going to make sure Dogman does well. Um, but all the other people coming in with graphic novels, uh, graphics publishes a bunch of, of books that you've probably never heard of. You know, a lot of comics you've never heard of that I don't even know if they earn out. Uh, but it's very kind of top heavy, I think, with Raina Telgemeier and a couple other creators uh, bringing in the vast, vast majority of revenue uh, for Scholastic and then kind of like everybody else. Uh, just, just my opinion. And it's not to say that there are not going to be more opportunities because of, you know, uh, uh, Dogman and, and Rand Telgemeier doing very, very well. Just that, you know, going into it and being like, oh, I'm going to be a scholastic graphic novelist and I'm going to make millions of dollars is not a very realistic, you know, is still not a very realistic uh, career goal. Just, just putting that out there. Um, despite the media dominance of superheroes in every screen, the superhero side of publishing has been mired in a slump outside of a few isolated successes like the new X-Men books, uh, Doomsday Clock, event titles event titles. Uh, Greep points out in his presentation, the sales of superhero oriented trade books is generally, uh, they generally follow the trends of periodicals about, uh, by about 12 to 18 months. So they have to put those together. So the numbers are likely to be even worse when 2019 data is tabulated. Superhero adjacent genres like horror and science fiction also, also saw a slump in trade sales with the declining popularity of books like The Walking Dead and Saga. Um, sales. Okay. This is where it gets really important. Okay. This is where it gets important. Uh, sales of Asian style manga, already one of the decade's fastest growing content categories have benefited from the availability of animated series on streaming networks like Hulu and Netflix. Um, so here we have the MPD executive director of business development, Kristen McLean sharing data. When you put it together, it paints a stark picture. Superheroes represent a declining share of the fastest growing segment and channel of the comics market. I don't think it's even a lack of interest so much in superheroes, just a lack of interest in the stuff coming from Marvel and DC, uh, a lack of availability, you know, buying single issues at the comic shop. That's kind of goofy. Uh, the price point being very high. Uh, Raina Telgemeier's book is, is nine bucks at Walmart. 
you can pick it up for nine dollars and it's hundreds of pages or like 200 pages or something uh whereas you're gonna pay four to five dollars for a marvel floppy book that's like 32 pages you know i mean that's a big part of it and uh you know a big part of it is the gimmicks you know there are a lot of things going on here the gimmicks um you know they, they reboot the universe every year or two to get a new number one uh we've got uh, creators out there causing drama I don't think you you have Raina Telgemeier out there every day on Twitter causing drama. I think she's too busy working on her books. You know, I haven't heard anything about her causing drama. So, you know, you, you put all this together and it's sort of like, it, it does feel like the superhero comic book industry is on a suicide run. So naturally people are going to go for other options and manga is, you know, it is hitting it out of the park at this point. Um, you know, we've been talking about it uh, for months, months, nothing new. This is nothing new. But now at least we have some numbers to to back this up, to back it up. Uh, you know, again, the numbers that we think are impressive here in the States are nothing compared to the numbers overseas. Japan, I mean, we're talking My Hero Academia just sold 24 million copies. OK, uh, to date, and it's a relatively new series. You look at other series like One Piece, and I think it's sold something like 400 and some million copies. I mean, these numbers are staggering compared to the American comic book market. And, uh, you know, the numbers even overseas are, are huge. In Japan, so many more people read comics. They read manga than over here. Um, you know, everybody there's there's manga for everybody, you know. So I, clearly we're doing it wrong in the States. We're, we're clearly doing it wrong. And, uh, you know, I think we need to get more people reading comics. And I think to do that, you're going to have to have more kinds of comics and not everybody's in the superheroes. Uh, just my opinion. You also need to make the comics very easy for people to get, you know, and that's, that's actually been one of the, the biggest, the biggest issues here in the state is the States is that, you know, short of like Archie's or something like that, you really can't pick up a comic book on uh, at every drugstore like you used to be able to and that has absolutely hurt the numbers you know so a lot of issues here a lot to unpack but uh clearly manga is on an upswing that's good that means we're going to see more manga be brought to the states and uh you know hopefully it doesn't it doesn't crash again uh, i don't see that happening it seems like everybody learned from the borders fiasco and uh you know so we'll we'll see we'll see what happens but um yeah nothing nothing new nothing earth shattering it's just good to have a little bit of uh validation uh here i guess so we're going to keep an eye on this situation please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants here on clownfish tv this has been neon and we will talk later thinking about printing your own comic books graphic novel or manga we recommend our friends over at Print Ninja. We've been using Print Ninja as long as they've been printing comics and both the quality and price is excellent. Mention Clownfish TV and get an additional 5% overrun of your book order quantity printed for free. For free! That's free books, people. Just mention this offer on the phone or in the additional information box on the quote request form. That's PrintNinja.com or click on the link in the description below. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.